final time, the Oregon driver, Carly Holmes, picks up the Gary Jacob Memorial. Hey everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today here on the Tanner Holmes YouTube channel, we have a very special Red Bluff Outlaw vlog episode here to show you guys. So usually when we go to Red Bluff, I just do my typical vlog and you guys kind of follow me around for the night, see how I do qualify, heat race, dash, and a main event. But today we are doing the whole video on my younger sister Carly. Carly, how you doing today? Good. So today's video is all about how Carly did at the 2020 Gary Jacobs Memorial at the Red Bluff Outlaws, which is one of the biggest races of the season at the track. Usually for the Gary Jacobs Memorial, it's one of those races where car counts are a little bit higher. They give out pretty cool looking trophies, as you can see here to my left. And overall, the intensity in the pit area is just much higher. So Carly competing in the open intermediate class, which is kind of the division between the 250s and the 500s, and it has kids from anywhere from 12 to 18 years old in it. It's a good class because it's the middle ground between the 250s and the 500s, so it doesn't just throw kids right into the 500 class with all the big dogs and the experienced racers. It gives them a year to kind of go out there and turn some laps in a CR 500 around Red Bluff. But with today's vlog being all about my younger sister, Carly, Carly, kind of take it away and talk about how you started off the night with qualifying. First off, I went on uh, second group, and I uh, tried to give myself lots of space between me and the car ahead of me, and I just wanted to get some good laps and stay consistent each lap and I came out quick time. Yeah, Carly laid down a good lap. I just caught the tail end of it, but like she mentioned, uh, it's pretty crucial to like, crucial to leave some space because in the open intermediate division, like there's so many kids at different stages in their racing. So some are off pace, some are gassed up. And uh, in order to get all three valuable laps and use them to the fullest potential, you really have to give a lot of room. So with Carly going quick time, where does that line you up for uh, the heat race? Second row outside, so fourth. So Carly started fourth for the heat race, and this was a tough one. She had one of my teammates in there, a factory QRC teammate, Kennedy Elledge. So now before we get into the fast four media footage from the heat race, Carly, kind of talk about uh, what your game plan was going into it. Qualifying quick time, you don't necessarily have to win the heat in order to be in a good spot for the A-Main event. Yeah, for sure. I knew uh, going out fourth that I definitely did not have to win it at all or win it on the first lap, but I did know that Ed Boyd put a really good setup on the car and that we were definitely going to be fast. Yeah, so now we're going to play some footage from the heat race. Oh, I, like I said, there's definitely some fast cars and Carly was going to have to maneuver well to make her way to the front. They're all green flag in the air early in this one. 18P of Jack Phillips, your leader with Carly Holmes second. Wow, Kennedy Elledge, all kinds of sideways down the front straightaway. Race for the lead, man, that 22C car is working tonight. She was fast time and now takes the lead away from Jack Phillips. Tate and Palmer runs third, Kennedy Elledge fourth, and Preston Carr fifth. White flag in the air. Oh, we got one stopped on the front straightaway. The 96 of Palmer comes to a stop as we race to the yellow checkered. Carly Holmes, Preston Carr, Tyler Matheny. So Carly is keeping the Gary Jacobs Memorial sweep alive, quick time, and wins the heat race from fourth, which is not easy to do at Red Bluff. You only have eight laps, and with some fast guys in there, you're going to have to pass cars in order to win. But anyway, she wins the heat race. Now we're going to move on into the trophy dash. The trophy dash at Red Bluff isn't anything super exciting. It doesn't determine a lineup for the A-Main event. It's all for points and a trophy, and usually sometimes a little bit of extra money. Kind of give a quick recap uh, on the trophy dash. So early on in the race, I missed the caution, and that bumped me up from 6th to 4th. And then on that next restart, I got past 3rd, and then I had like a slider battle for a little bit with 2nd. Once I got into 2nd, I tried to track down the leader, but I just ran out of laps. Yeah, so Carly almost, uh, oh, that technically kind of ruined the sweep for the night, but uh, still ultimately a good trophy dash in six laps, just like a heat race. It's hard to advance because those are the six fastest kids that night in qualifying. So now moving on to the A-Main event, this is where I decided to throw a GoPro on Carly's car because I just had a feeling. I had a feeling that uh, she was going to maybe win this race. She had been good all season long, but just wasn't able to put together a full A-Main event. And just watching Carly all night, I can tell you being a spectator and her brother, like she just looked like the fastest car. Ed Boyd, her crew chief, I mean, he put on a phenomenal setup. You could just yeah. tell the 22C was rolling. Other open guys would come up to me and be like, man, I hope my car's that fast in the A. So because you're a quick time, where'd you roll off for the feature? Six. 
So Carly rolled off third row outside, and like I said, all the fast guys are right there in front of her, so she was gonna have to earn it if she wanted to win. So like we talked about a little bit for the heat race, but going into the A main event, rolling off from sixth, what's your game plan to pass those guys when you know your car is as fast as it is? I knew I definitely just had to take my time. I knew we had 25 laps ahead of me, and throughout the 25 laps, I could definitely get to the lead if I just took my time to get there. So anyway, now we are gonna roll into the 25 lap feature, which turned into what, a 20 lap feature? Yeah, they, they cut it down five laps because we were at the time limit. Yeah, a few wrecks early, just that took some time to kind of pull cars apart and whatnot. But anyway, as you guys can tell from the title and everything, what Carly's result is, but if you wanna ride along with her for the 20 lap feature for the 2020 Gary Jacobs Memorial, Carly's first career open intermediate victory, let's get into it. Well, Carly Holmes out of the car and going up top to celebrate her main event victory here tonight in car number 22C. One, one, one. 
So a phenomenal A-Main event. Obviously, Carly brought home the hardware. Uh, talk a little bit about what you had to do early in the race to get to the front. A few things kind of just went your way. Yeah, I just uh, tried to stay on the top side because I knew the top was definitely the faster uh, line on the track. And so I figured if I just stayed up there and, you know, maybe throw some sliders, just try to get to the lead. And I also feel like you used restarts to your advantage. You know, at Red Bluff, you guys have kind of noticed in my videos, if you get trapped on the top side, you can move forward fast and kind of advance through the field. If you get trapped on the bottom, you're kind of at a disadvantage depending on the track conditions. Awesome to see Carly, though, get her first win. That was a pretty big moment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching a little bit of Fast 4 media footage and the onboard camera. Carly, anybody you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Ed Boyd for just putting an amazing fast setup on each and every weekend. Truck Shop Motors, Factory QRC, Stroker Industry, Ranch Racing Covers, Fastenal, Durango RV, JMR. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much from myself too. I appreciate appreciate all the support that you guys give to Carly. Ed has had the 22C dialed in and I'm excited to watch you guys in the last seven races of the season. Carly's going to be gunning for a few more victories. Anyway, that's all we got for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please slap a like on it. I know I haven't created a whole lot of stuff on Carly lately just because it's kind of been back and forth at Red Bluff to start the season. We both have had a roller coaster of a start to the season, but it's starting to really turn around for both of us. I know you guys have really enjoyed the videos on Carly in the past. First sprint car race, first time in a sprint car, Carly's first win of 2020. So we're definitely going to keep following her along into 2021 as Carly advances through her racing career. Anyway, I guess any last words, Carly? Thanks for watching. Absolutely. We will see you guys all in the next one. Uh, thank you for watching, like Carly said, and we will talk soon. Deuces. Deuces.